Hi, my name is Son, and in this video we will talk about path constraints. A path constraint adjusts bone transforms using a path. The bones can be moved along the path and have the rotation adjusted to point along the path. Path constraints can replace translation keys, allowing movement to be defined more easily with the path. Many other uses involve constraining multiple bones to a path and then controlling the bones by manipulating the path rather than adjusting each bone individually. For example, bones can be spaced evenly along a path or can be scaled up from zero, causing them to appear to grow. To create a path constraint, select the bones to be constrained, then click New and then choose Path Constraint. Then choose an existing path to be the target. The bones can be anywhere in the bone hierarchy as long as they're not ascendants of the target path. The path constraint does not actually target a path, instead it targets a slot. And the path constraint will use the path visible for the slot if we have any. This provides extra flexibility because a single path constraint can work with multiple paths. The path constraint has many settings to configure how the constrained bones are manipulated. Clicking the bones will open a select box. Click a bone name in the select box to select that bone or drag bones to change the order the path constraint will position the bones. Right clicking a bone name will select that bone without opening the select box. To change the bones, click the pen next to the bone select box and then select the bones you want to be affected. To change the target, click the pen next to the target select box and then select the target path. Position mode controls how the first bone is positioned along the path. Fixed position places the bones at a fixed distance along the path from the start of the path. Percent position places the bone at a distance along the path from the start of the path equal to a percentage of the total path length. The position of the first bone can be changed via the slider or by dragging the arrow icon which is placed on the first constrained bone in the editor area. For a path that is not closed, the position can be before the start of the path or past the end of the path. In this case, the position is determined using a straight line in the direction the start or the end of the path is pointing. Spacing mode controls how bones after the first bone are positioned along the path. Length spacing places bones at a distance along the path from the previous bone equal to the length of the previous bone. This is usual when we want different spacing between each bone. With fixed spacing, the bones are placed at a fixed distance along the path from the previous bone. Percent spacing places bones at a distance along the path from the previous bone equal to a percentage of the total path length. This is useful if we want to space bone equally along the path or if we want to have the spacing dependent on the length of the path. Rotate mode controls how bones are rotated, translated and scaled to match the path. Tangent rotate mode rotates the bone to point in the direction of the path at the bone's position. When the path bends, the tip of the bone won't fall on the path and the bone won't point to the position of the next bone. Chain rotate mode first translates the bone to be at the tip of the previous bone. Then it rotates the bone so it points to the position along the path of the next bone. When the rotation offset is not zero, the translation is not applied. When the path bends sharply, the previous bone tip might not fall on the path. Chain rotate mode is useful when bones need to be placed at the tip of the previous bone and the bones represent something rigid, such as tank threads. Chain scale rotate mode first rotates the bone so it points the position along the path of the next bone, and then it scales the bone so its tip is exactly at that position. This ensures all bone positions and tips fall on the path. Chain scale rotate mode is useful when bones need to be placed at the tip of the previous bone and the bones represent something flexible, for example, a snake. 
The rotate mix slider controls how much the bones are affected by rotate mode. When the mix is zero, the rotate mode has no effect. And when the mix is 100, the rotate mode adjustments are fully applied. A mix between 0 and 100 results in a transform between the bone's own transform and the rotate mode's adjustments. The rotate mix is generally at either 0 or 100 and is only transitioned between 0 and 100 briefly to have the path constraints smoothly take control of or release control of the bones. A rotate mix between 0 and 100 can result in snapping because the interpolation between the bone's rotation and and the rotate mode's rotation is done using the shortest rotation direction. The translate mix slider controls how much the bone's position is affected by the path constraint. When the mix is zero, the bone's position is used and the path constraint has no effect. When the mix is 100, the bone is positioned solely by the path constraint. A mix between zero and 100 results in a position between the bone's own position and the path constraints position. When link sliders is checked, the rotate and translate mix sliders will have the same value. The rotate offset is added to rotation as computed by the rotate mode. This is provided for convenience to avoid needing an extra bone solely to point in a different direction. Changing the position, spacing, rotate mix, or translate mix sliders causes the key icon near the slider to turn orange. Clicking the key icon sets a key for the slider. The rotate and translate mixes are always keyed together. The path constraint color uses the color of the first constraint bone. I hope this video has been helpful and I will see you again for the next video. Bye for now.